never stop praying. Never stop praying. No, 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 never stop praying. Don't you, praying. don't you stop praying. Never stop praying. No, never praying. stop praying. Never stop praying. Praying and being thankful, never stop praying. No, never stop praying. Be ready for anything by praying and being thankful. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Come on, never stop praying. Yes, never stop praying. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. No, no. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. No, no, no. Never stop praying. Colossians 4 verse 2. Colossians 4 verse 2. Never stop praying. No, no, no. Never stop Colossians 4 verse 2 Never stop praying Never stop praying Hello boys and girls How are you? So happy you could join us for today's class How are you feeling today? My name is is Wilkie Stamumbi. I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be having this session with you. I hope you're also feeling excited. You're curious as, what to, as to what we're going to learn today and you're excited about this new class. So today we're going to tackle something very, very new from the Bible. So I hope you have your Bible and notebook ready. I hope you've called all your friends close by so that they can learn this session with you, okay? And before we start, first things first, we must pray, okay? So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the class you're allowing us to have. Lord, we pray that you may teach us things from the Bible, things that we need to know, oh Lord God, and help us to remember them. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Awesome, okay? So today we're learning something from the Bible. I have a Bible story for you, okay? It's about, let me give you clues, okay? It's about... A rich man, okay, the man was rich. Um, uh, what else? The man was short. Can you think of a rich, short man in the Bible? He was very wealthy and he was short, okay? And if you still don't know who I'm talking about, he got a chance to meet Jesus. Do you now know who the man is? If you're guessing Zacchaeus, Correct, because that's the man we're studying about today, okay? So if you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Luke, chapter 19, because that's where we get the story of Zacchaeus, okay? Luke, chapter 19, and we'll be reading verse 1 to 10, okay? So let me read. Luke, chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. He entered Jericho. This is Jesus we're referring to, okay? Jesus is walking around. So he entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. What did I say? He was rich, right? And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, to see Jesus, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and, and came down and received him joyfully. When they saw this, that's the rest of the crowd, they grumbled. He has gone into, in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. That's what they said. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. 
And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he, he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Okay, So that's the story of Zacchaeus. I told you he was a wealthy man, right? A very, very wealthy man. And he was wealthy because he had been a tax collector. So I've got some bags here full of cash. So Zacchaeus would go around collecting money, which is tax, from the shops around, the, the businesses around, the people around. And so he was very, very wealthy. Now we all pay taxes, okay? Even Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar when he was asked, should we pay taxes? Even mom and dad pay taxes. When we buy things, we pay taxes. It's okay to pay taxes because it helps us in our country. But Zacchaeus was doing something wrong. Instead of collecting the tax that was supposed to be given, he used to go and ask for more, okay? He used to go and say, give me more. If the tax is 10 shillings, he'd say, give me 20 shillings or give me 50 shillings. And because of that, he would go give the taxes to the government, but the excess that he has collected, he would remain with it. And because of that, he was a very, very, very wealthy man. And because people knew this about Zacchaeus. People knew that they were giving, that Zacchaeus was demanding more than what they should be giving. They did not like him. They knew he was a thief. They knew he was a bad man. They knew he was a sinner because of all these bad things that he was doing. But there was nothing he could do, okay? So this day, Jesus is coming around. Jesus is coming into Jericho. And Zacchaeus knows, I'd like to see this man. I've heard so much about him. I'd like to see him. But he's short. And of course, there's a big crowd. There are many people who've come to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus is short. And he can see. He can see above the crowd. He can see above the crowd. Have you been in that position before? You're trying to see something, but you can't see. You can't see. But Zacchaeus was smart. He said, you know what? Before the crowd gets over there, and I know Jesus is coming this way. Let me go up that sycamore tree, climb it up. And because I'm short and I'm on a big tree, I'll be able to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see this, this man and know what he's been doing. So Zacchaeus rushes to the sycamore tree, climbs up, okay? Let me teach you a little song at this point. Let's take a break to learn this new song okay so this little tune is supposed to remind you of zacchaeus up a tree okay did you ever see zacchaeus 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 did you ever see zacchaeus way up on the tree so zacchaeus has gone up on a tree okay and he's looking around for jesus looking around for jesus so he looked around for jesus then climbed up to see him did you ever see zacchaeus way up on that tree okay so Zacchaeus has gone up a tree climbed up for one purpose to see Jesus okay amazing amongst this big crowd Zacchaeus just wanted to see Jesus and when Jesus comes walking by guess what he looks up the tree he sees Zacchaeus out of all this big crowd he sees Zacchaeus up the tree and says Zacchaeus please come down because I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to your house today. What an honor. What an honor to be chosen by Jesus. He was looking out. He was hoping to see Jesus. And Jesus does the absolute incredible thing. Says, Zacchaeus, calm down. I'm actually coming to your house today. Okay? Now, you remember what we said? This man was a sinner. He had been going around collecting extra money from people. You. You. Give me money. And you say, Zacchaeus, here's the 10 shillings. He says, 10 shillings? I'm not taking 10 shillings. I'm taking 50 or 100. Okay? So people are very angry. Why is this wonderful man, Jesus, going to see this horrible man, Zacchaeus, the thief, the tax collector? He steals from us. So they grumbled. They grumbled. Have you been in a situation where you thought, why is this good thing happening to this bad person this person did this and this yesterday this person did that and that yesterday in fact i know for sure that they are sinners but you see the lord is blessing them god is favoring them goodness is just happening in that life and you're wondering oh, what is this 
What is this happening? And you're grumbling. So that's exactly what the crowd was feeling. They knew Zacchaeus. They knew he was a bad man. And they knew all the bad things he was doing. So they, they grumbled. They grumbled. They were so angry. Okay? So Jesus goes with Zacchaeus into his house. Okay? Then, little break. A little song to remind us what is just happening now. Okay? Jesus was a key as a key as a key as Jesus was a key as way up on that tree. Okay, sing it with me. Jesus was a key as a key as a key as Jesus was a key as way up on that tree. Zacchaeus, come down now. I'm coming to your house. Jesus was a key as way up on that tree. Okay. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down now. I'm coming to your house. Wonderful news. So Jesus and Zacchaeus going into Zacchaeus' house. And of course, Jesus loved to sit with people and eat and drink. And so they were sat. They were having a good time. And people were just wondering, why is he seated with a sinner? Why are they together? This doesn't make sense. Okay. But do you know what happened when they were sitting, eating and drinking? Jesus never told Zacchaeus anything bad, anything wrong about his behavior. But Zacchaeus was so touched that Jesus had come into his house and he stood up and announced before the whole crowd that was there in his house, the smaller crowd in his house, including to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, everything that I have, I'm half of everything that I have, I'm going to give to the poor. So all of his wealth, Half of it, he was going to give to the poor. And everything that I, I have stolen, because he knew he had stolen from people, he was going to return to the people he had stolen from four times. Four times he was going to give back everything that he had stolen. So let me ask you, let's do some math here. If Zacchaeus had stolen from you, okay? So he came to your business one day, he came to your house, he came home and said, the... You knew the tax to be one shilling. But Zacchaeus said, no, it's 10 shillings. So you went back in, gave this man the money that he wanted. You gave him 10 shillings. And now Zacchaeus has made a declaration. He stole Jesus. He's going to return four times what he has stolen. So how much would Zacchaeus be giving you back? He would be giving you 40 shillings. 40 shillings. So Zacchaeus went over and above what he had stolen because he felt so, so sorry. So, so sorry for everything that he had done. And now, because Jesus had come into his house, he was so, so sorry. He decided, you know what? Everything that I have, half of it I'm giving to the poor. And what I've stolen, I'm giving it back four times. So he gave all these things back. He was so, so, so sorry. Okay. So today's class, we're talking about being sincerely sorry. Okay. Say sincerely sorry. Being sincerely sorry is admitting that you have done wrong and feeling bad about it, but being willing, to, being willing to correct the mistake that you've done, okay? So when you're willing to correct the mistake that you've done and you're very, very sad about it, you are sincerely sorry, okay? So Zacchaeus made this personal decision when Jesus was in his house to give back everything that he had stolen four times, okay? So even for us, Jesus comes into our lives and because we don't deserve this nice man, this wonderful man who had done no sins but only given to us, sometimes you can feel so, so sad, so, so sorry about the things that we have done. Lord, I'm a bad person. Lord, I have done many bad things. Lord, I'm a liar. Lord, I have stolen. Lord, I get very angry and I hit my friends. And nobody can trust me. You can feel so bad. Why is this nice person willing to come and sit with me? Everybody knows I am bad. Everybody knows I am bad. And that's what Zacchaeus was feeling. But when Jesus comes into our life, he wants to sit with us. He wants to have a meal with us, shine our happy times, and just get to know us. And for these things, 
that we've done, we feel so sorry. But God gives us an opportunity to say sorry. He forgives us. Okay, so when we are sincerely sorry, God forgives us our sins. God forgives us for all the bad things we have done. And God allows us to correct our mistakes. Okay, so one of the ways you can correct your mistakes is if you've wronged anyone, go to them and tell them sorry. Okay, if you've wronged anyone, go ask for their forgiveness. Okay, if you've taken anything from anyone, go return it. Okay. If you've done, if you've hit someone, make sure you say you're sorry to them. If you've lied to someone, make sure you go back and tell them the truth. Okay? So God gives us that opportunity to apologize and correct our mistakes. What if you've been disobedient? What if mommy or daddy or somebody at home asked you to do something, but you refused to do it? You said, no, I'm not going to do it. What if you are disobedient? What if you are asked not to do something and you went and did it? Okay. Even then, you should go and say you're sorry. And remember, correct, correct. Go and do it. Or if you are doing something you're not supposed to do, stop doing it. Okay. Once you say you're sorry, you correct. Okay. And that's what Zacchaeus did. So Zacchaeus, he was a bad man, the worst, worst man. Everybody was angry to see Jesus go there. But because of Jesus, he was able to do these amazing things. He was able to turn his life around. He was able to be a good man. So even with the strength of Jesus, even us, no matter how bad we are or how bad people think we are or say we are, Jesus can help us turn around, okay, from bad to good. Now let me ask you, was the crowd wrong to be angry? No, they were not. Zacchaeus had been stealing from them for many, many years. So they were right to be angry, okay? They were, they were feeling it. They were feeling bad. This man is a bad man. And even you, when you, somebody wrongs you, how do you feel? Don't you feel angry? What's your sad face? Hmm? No, no. What's your sad face? Do you have a sad face when somebody makes you angry? You do. We all get sad, okay? But what if that person comes and apologizes and says they're sorry? Do you still feel angry? No. You get happy. Happy because you feel better. So it's the same thing. When we go to apologize, we make people feel happy. We make people feel excited you know you cool them down and you make them feel happy okay so it's always good to apologize you also make the other person you've had feel happy but the best part can you guess how god feels when we turn our lives around when we move from bad to good when we apologize can you guess how god feels he's very very happy god loves it when we correct our mistakes, when we say sorry, when we come back to him and ask for forgiveness, God loves it, okay? So Jesus helps us to turn our lives around. If you are bad, Jesus can help us be good. If you are a liar, Jesus can help us tell the truth, okay? And when we have sinned, when we have done something wrong, and we go back to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. He gets very, very happy, and he forgives us, and he embraces us back as his children. He's so, so happy when we are sorry for our mistakes, okay? So remember the story of Zacchaeus. Every time that you feel you're a bad person and everybody thinks you're bad and there's nothing good about you, remember the story of Zacchaeus and remember to be sorry, be sincerely sorry for the bad things you've done and correct your ways, okay? Correct your ways. So, did you ever see Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus? Did you ever see Zacchaeus? Wait up on the tree remember the story of Zacchaeus okay so memory verse memory verse for today again from the bible so we go to the book of second thessalonians second thessalonians 
chapter 3 verse 13b okay second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13b and it says never tire of doing what is right okay never tire of doing what is right tire is just being tired so never ever be tired of doing what is right okay let's see if we can remember the memory verse okay so it comes from second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 b okay it comes from second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 b okay and it says never tire of doing what is right okay what does it say never tire of doing what is right now we can remember that right never tire of doing what is right but what does it mean it means any opportunity you get to do what is right do it don't get tired of doing what is right okay don't feel ah i did enough good things yesterday no always do the right thing any chance you get okay so remember zacchaeus remember you can turn your life around just be sorry and go and ask for forgiveness okay ask for forgiveness from the person you've wronged ask for forgiveness from god okay never tire of doing what is right which comes from second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 b second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 b okay so we don't end it right here it's time for cry it's time for crafts so make sure you get our crafts from the website of Nairobi Chapel and you can get our crafts for today finally as we come to the end of this class I want us to pray together so that we may remember that no matter how bad we are no matter what wrong we do no matter what sin that God still wants to be with us so let us pray Thank you, Lord, for the lesson that you have taught us today. Thank you, Lord, for the example of Zacchaeus. Remind us, Lord, to be sorry and to come back and correct our ways. We thank you for this lesson, for it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, boys and girls. See you next time. Second Thessalonians 313 Good morning boys and girls. My name is Teacher Simon and I'll be taking us through today's lesson on uh, prayers of petition uh, from the story of the persistent widow in the book of Luke uh, chapter 18 from verse 1 to 8. But before even we begin, uh, let's start with the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you this morning uh, for these dear ones. We pray that even as we go through your word, that you teach us, that you would help us to apply it uh, and to put it into practice for our joy and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever wanted something so badly that you kept asking your father or mother or guardian for it over and over again? Um, we have all done that at some point. I know when I was a child, I really wanted a bike so badly and I kept on asking for it over and over again. And I know if you have been there, if you've wanted something, you've asked for it over and over again. I'd like to hear from you guys and you can write it on the chat. What is that one thing that you are persistent asking uh, your, your guardians or your parents for? 
In our story today, Jesus is teaching us how to pray and not to give up. And the story is about a persistent widow who went to a judge asking him for help over something. And the judge kept on ignoring her and he didn't even care about her. But eventually, the judge ended up granting her request. And so Jesus is reminding us that um, the judge is unjust and doesn't love people or love God, but he eventually answers the widow's prayer. So our story will be reminding us that God is a just God, that we can come to him and pray for something uh, that we want to ask him for. And uh, we'll just look at what that scripture says, and we're going to read. So as we said, it's from Luke 18, from verse 1 to verse 8, and I will read it for us. And then he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on earth. And that's our Bible scripture for today. Um, and there are three lessons that I would like us to learn uh, from this story today. Number one is that we should always pray. And when we pray, we should pray without giving up. The story of the persistent widow reminds us that, that this widow kept on going even though she was ignored by the unjust judge, she kept on going and not giving up on her request. The second lesson that I'd like us to learn today is that uh, God hears our prayers. It may seem that uh, maybe we are praying for long and it might look like God doesn't hear our prayers, but we can rest assured. We cannot know everything about God, but there's one thing we can know, that he always hears our prayers. So this is to encourage us to always pray and to never give up praying because God hears our prayers. So the last point that I'd like us to learn today from our story, and a question really I'd like to ask us, is that does it mean that when we ask for something over and over again that we will eventually get it? No. And we want to believe that God is good and he knows the best gift to give to us. So we might not know what is best in our situation and an answer such as no could be something that God desires for us because he knows that is what is best for us. And we can trust him that he has a plan, even though we might not know the entire plan. So those are three lessons for today and probably a question that I'd like to leave with you boys and girls. Um, have you given up on praying about something? Is there something that you need to start doing? Um, I'd like you to pray and to continue praying without giving up and wait on God and trust that he hears your prayers and he's delighted to hear you pray. So just to encourage you to continue praying. So we're going to look at our memory verse today, which comes from the book of First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, and it says, First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, requests, and thanksgiving be offered to God for all people. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, as our memory verse has urged us, let's remember to make a prayers of petition. And as we've looked at petition, prayers of petition is pleading with God, asking for his help, asking for his guidance and his favor in everything that we do. And as it instructs us, we should be ready to pray for our leaders in our country. Uh, and I pray that we'll be able to do that uh, in the coming week and in the coming months. So let's pray as we conclude today's lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson today. I pray that you may teach us to pray without giving up, and I pray that you'd give us patience even as we wait for you to answer us, 
And I pray that we'll continue to entrust everything to you, knowing that, Lord, that you are pleased to hear and to answer us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Boys and girls, it's craft time. And for the six and seven-year-olds, you have your crafts activities and the devotionals are at the back. For eight and 11-year-olds, you have your crafts uh, and the monthly devotional booklets. So this is just to remind us, just to study uh, and get to dig into God's Word through our devotions. If you don't have your devotionals, you can download them from the Nairobi Chapel website. Thank you for joining me today uh, for today's lesson. Until we meet next time, bye. Call to you.